you might remember this vector valued function from the first segment but in case you had not in the brief introduction to vector valued functions we plotted a few key points and sketched this graph I want to come back and look at this graph um, a little bit more carefully and, and highlight a few more pieces of the, the puzzle. Um, this is a calculus class and there has been very little evidence of calculus so far. Just uh, uh, need just some tiny little pieces only. So to plot points we just generated values uh, for the vector uh, starting at t is 0 and we had made this table so this is something we had done previously now the first time I graphed it I sketched it by hand and it wasn't too bad of a graph but I took the liberty here of plotting those same points onto graph paper the graph begins here at the point 1 comma 2 and it moves in this direction around the parabola so the directions indicated if I plotted more points I would just have the arrow extend past think of this as a moving object not as um, just a parabola this is like the car driving on the parabola road so we call r of t position or location it's where we're located at a period of time now if I'm moving along quickly you do recall that there is such a thing as a pause button and you could have filled out this table and as another little reminder these may be vectors but if you wrote them as coordinates you would not be in trouble the authors uh, treat the position as points but what you're about to see will definitely be vectors all right so we're going to take the first derivative and I'll better define the derivative in a later segment but to use the derivative is quite simple and I know some of you have been really itching to use some calculus so to use the derivative you just need to take the derivative of each term so the first term uh, the derivative would be 2 times t minus 1 to the first power times 1 for a chain rule and the second term its derivative is negative 1 and if I were to investigate at this point on the graph right here at time equals 2 and I were to find the derivative at time 2 let's see 2 minus 1 is 1 1 times 2 is 2 I would get the vector 2 negative 1 and I'm actually going to put that right here 2 and down 1 and man this picture is so not good so I'm going to enlarge and give you a better view of it imagine a tangent line right there you know something that looks like this there we go this vector 2 negative 1 is on that tangent line and you might better be acquainted with it let me introduce it by its first name as the velocity vector velocity vector you might recall from calculus and some of you have had some physics velocity and speed are not the same we'll get to speed later this is the velocity vector which is part of the tangent on that graph it goes right to and down one on this graph paper 
You want to guess what the second derivative is called? Why, yes. The second derivative, and this should have been at 2, the second derivative our prime prime or double prime is the same as the derivative of velocity this is called and some of you have named it already acceleration if we calculate one more derivative the derivative of 2t minus 2 is 2 and the derivative of negative 1, it's, since it's constant, is 0. And it turns out this vector is constant. I'm just going to put a little notation here. Let me get back on the camera. That vector would, from this point, go two units to the right, exactly. But it would be that same vector from every point because the acceleration is constant in a parabola. And that's something we see when we talk about gravity near Earth's surface. We'll have a constant gravitational effect. So this is not really the most direct way of teaching a topic, but I wanted you to meet the notations for velocity and acceleration and see how easy they are to calculate before we get uh, into some other examples. We're going to do another um, interesting curve example in the next segment, so stay tuned.